first one was 84 when I joined, joined the club Canterbury. Um, I was quite nervous at the time because I'd never played in the grand final in my life, so pretty nervous. When I finished in 95, um, completely different. I was quite relaxed, did the same things I did every single game leading up to that, that game. Um, I tried to stay relaxed. Waking up, I, I think I always used to wake up a lot earlier than what I normally would on grand final day. You're just very excited. Um, you really notice that the, you know, the weather was, was warmer, grand final day. Um, uh, had trouble probably trying to, to eat um, and try not to think about the game. Um, and, and it's hard to switch off, so you'd, you'd, you'd try and you know, do something where you could just try and relax, maybe try and have an after, afternoon sleep, um, but try not to think about it too much, but uh, it's pretty difficult because at the end of the day you know that you know, there's a big game uh, that you're going to be involved in, um, there's going to be a winner and a loser. Um, uh, and the emotions are completely different uh, from winning to, to losing. So you, you don't want to be uh, you don't want to be in the losing dressing shed. Yeah, well, I was pretty lucky. I was only 20 years of age in my first grand final. So at that that stage of your life, you think you're bulletproof and uh, you know the world's yours. So um, I just went into the game really excited, not not for one minute thinking we weren't going to win, and uh, I just couldn't wait to get out there. I just had a smile on my face from ear to ear, and I couldn't wipe it off. You try and do what you do every other week, um, and, and you know people will say that to you, but. Um, it is different, um, you're excited and you've got to make sure that doesn't go too far and, and obviously for us we were, we were down in Sydney so we're waking up in Sydney which is, which is a little bit different for us. But I, I think what we really look forward to is usually it was obviously a day match, sp spring weather, great, so you just enjoyed it but you tried to keep it as, as close to a normal game as you could um, but there was always a, the tingle going on in the stomach. Uh, my thoughts on the grand final day, again, uh, is everyone well? <laughs> First thing you check, anyone got the flu, anyone got a bug, anyone, you know, any issues, and particularly if you've been carrying issues, which you have generally, you know, you go straight to the medical staff, how are they this morning, are we gonna play so and so? Each grand final I've had someone on standby for someone else, you know, and we've had to make some decisions, so. Uh, first thing you do is just get up to and go through the processes of you know, where are we up to with everybody, uh, we're going to be fit. No one's come down, as I said, with a flu overnight or, um, you know, and just uh, go through those processes, I think. Yeah, look, some guys like to go out onto the field and, and sort of examine the ground and, and see the reserve grade play and the lower grades and get caught up in the atmosphere. Personally, I just like to go into the corner of the dressing room and, and sort of play some music and find my own little space where I relax. But um, it's certainly a buzz, plenty of pitches and, and plenty of streamers and balloons. And it's certainly like a party atmosphere in the dressing room even before the grand final's been played and you can't help but see some of the winning premiership t-shirts that are floating around. So it's a party place before the game even starts. Most of the dressing sheds that I played in uh, were probably quite calm. Um, uh, you could feel everyone was on edge. Uh, there wouldn't be a lot of talk. Um, blokes knew what their roles were. Um, and I think that's so important that you're very, um, not that you're very structured, but you've got total clarity on what you, what you need to do out there. Yeah, look, a dressing room's a unique environment. There's some guys that like to have a joke. Um, and have a bit of a, a, a laugh here and there. There's other guys that are very serious that like to psych themselves up and be left alone. So the, the dressing room's are a real mixed bag, but um, on grand final day, there's certainly a lot more nerves than normal. And uh, you know, there's certainly a lot of butterflies in that dressing room. Coaches today say a lot more, you know, sit them down and talk to them. In those days, it was, we'd done our talk really, our talking and team meeting back at the hotel. So we got on the bus and got there. So it was really just little groups. You know, I don't like to fill their heads full too much. They've got enough to worry about. Um, main thing we're talking about was you know, our team goal, what we needed to do just as a group really, rather than focus on individual things. Uh, you don't need to rev them up on a, on a grand final day. If anything, you want them you know, as calm as you can. Uh, nerves are the big killer, as was, you're going to talk to me later about Martin Bellis' catch from the kickoff. Yeah, nerves can be a, a crucial thing in a, in a big game. Yeah.